All right, here we are. We got practice going for our step ladder final. Thanks to everybody joining us back here at Bolero Wauwatosa. Uh, do us a favor, hit that share button, please. Um, let everybody know you're watching the step ladder finals now. Even if they're watching NFL football or whatever else might be on TV right now, they, at least they can come back and watch the step ladder final a little later today or tomorrow or actually whenever they feel like it because. It's uh, going to be a heck of a finals here. Yeah, it's apparently, some of my graphics department guys decided to have things jump in early. So each of these bowlers finishing a little bit of practice here. Team Moss with his youth players, Aubin Williams and Bryce Irwin, battling Team A.J. Johnson. With Devin Titus and Dick Titus, his youth players. Waiting in the wings will be Team Jason Miller with Trey Heinrichsmeyer and Winston, Winston Petri. And our top seed, Team Deutschendorf. And we'll get their lineup from Team Deutschendorf shortly. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today, all day long. Thanks for hitting that share button and letting everybody know that. And getting as many people, getting as many eyeballs on this. It's not just a Junior Hall of Fame title on the line. This is also a PBA Junior affiliate tournament. And so these young players, if they're PBA junior members, such as Trey Heinrichsmeyer, and I'm sure there's several others in this field, uh, they'll also earn points towards the Jim Welch Memorial Scholarship Fund that each region of the PBA has. So lots of extra scholarship money available that way as well. And there you see some of the fans and crowd. There you see tournament director Steve Matilla and his lovely wife Laura to the Middle right of your picture. And once again, I'm $2 Phil Brylow joining you in the booth. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Once again, these matches in the step ladder, two-game total pin matches. Baker format, so the adult player, the celebrity, will bowl the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth frames. Then one player on each team will bowl the second, fifth, and eighth. The other youth player will bowl the third, sixth, and ninth. And the pace is going to be fast and furious, so we keep up as best we can. We'll give you... The all the action possible here on every shot. We'll try to give you some different looks shot to shot as well. But, hey, I'm the one-man booth today. I'm juggling cats here. i got names. I've got lineups. I've got fun facts. Looks like we are getting ready to get underway. So here we go. We get the handshakes. We get the good luck. And Team A.J. Johnson decided to start on lane 22. So two-game total pin match. They will switch lanes after the first game of competition here with Chad Moss leading things off for his team. He 
Yeah, you see him get himself set up. Chad Myers does a lot of his bowling at Classic Lanes Menominee Falls. And he starts with 10 back for his team. And unfortunately, oh, there we And unfortunately, my scoreboard cam is stuck. Let's hope we can reset that here. Great toss there by Johnson. There's Dick Titus, week 10. Ivan Williams, big strike. In the third frame for his team. And a big strike by Devin Titus. Let's take a look here at Moss as he steps up fourth frame this game even and a big double for team Moss as AJ Johnson steps up look at that nice easy setup on the side There's a little closer look at Johnson, fourth frame, six kicks to 10. Well done for Johnson. And Bryce Irwin gets his team out with a three bagger in the beverage frame. Dick Titus. Tries to roll that 2 8 10 out, gets the 8 10 out, leaves just the two. Now, this is going to be a big toss here for Robin Williams. Oh, that powerful shot. We've seen Williams before. We saw him back in the Top Gun in April. And a big four bagger early lead for Team Moss. Titus of the Dake variety gets that cover in the fifth frame. Titus of the Devon variety stepping up next in the sixth for his team. Let's see if Moss is going to take to the lanes. And he will. So you see a little bit of extra time he's taken. Oh, now he gets the 2 8 10. But once again, two game total pin match. We've seen this before where teams get a little comfortable on one lane, switch lanes on the pair, and 
Katie barred the door, there can be some problems. And the smart move covering two. Irwin can't get the 10 to rattle down. And then you see A.J. Johnson talking to his teammates going, hey, boys, we can settle down here. We still got plenty of room in this match. Oh, and that's where the plenty of room in this match comes into play. Johnson can really get some momentum swinging back for his team. Here at the seventh frame. Ah, oh, Ripper 7 10 almost. Seven does fall eight for Johnson. Now you see Chad Moss talking to his lane mates. And looks like Moss has got his team just kind of waiting to see what happens. A little bit before Aubin Williams will step up in the ninth frame. Let's see what Dake Titus can do here in the eighth frame. And you hear A.J. Johnson ask that one to hook. And it did. Let's see what Aubin Williams can do here. As he steps up ninth frame. Oh, no chance anything stands on that shot. Devin Titus doesn't get that ball to peel. A.J. Johnson asked for it, didn't happen. And now a big opening. Once again, that Chad Moss is ready to just step up. Here you see that bobble, just making sure everything's nice and loose before he gets into his swing. Oh, <laughs> at 7-9, just teased him for a moment, and there's no way that was standing against the might of Chad Moss. 10 down, and now a chance for a big lead, barring a miracle conversion here by Devin Titus. How about that? Hook it across the face. And that is a momentum saver for that team. It's going to make Chad Moss work that little bit harder here. Second ball of the 10th frame, maximum score, 237. Oh, just trips that four out. Let's see what Johnson can do here. First ball of his 10th frame, looking to get to... 205, so his team's looking at being down a minimum of 32 pins. And that one crawls high, 3, 6, 9, 10. And you see the puzzlement on Johnson as he comes back. Phil shot for Moss. There you go, 10 back. A.J. Johnson look up at the scoreboard, knows his team's maximum now, 191.
Good cover there. By Johnson. And now all 10 a must. They're looking at a 46 pin deficit. We've seen them made up in these two game total pin bakers before. Remember a match years ago with Ron Volks and the five horsemen at Motion Plus in our team tournament there where they popped off at 279 in the second game as the teams will change lanes here. And I'm sure there's going to be a little strategy talk between these two teams before they get underway. A.J. Johnson will throw the first ball. Well, it looks like they're going to defer. It looks like Chad Moss will get the first toss here. In game two. And that comes light, and that's the danger with switching lanes. Is there's been ten or twelve shots thrown in that other lane that have a chance to really change the lane pattern. AJ Johnson though packs ten back nicely. Moss will be smart here, just take the two. He was looking for a lucky bounce, didn't quite get it. And now Dick Titus. Needs that one to pick up, and he almost returned the favor with 2 10 of his own. Lucky to take the 10 down. Bryce Irvin, second frame, can't roll the two. We're starting to see that over-under that was, it really didn't really develop until we got into the Baker games after four games of qualifying, but these players are already moving left early. Ooh, and he was staring that one down all the way. Let's see what Devin Titus can do here. Third frame. Team down by 35. Perfect strike. Now it's up to Ivan Williams. Keep his team up by 30 plus. Oh my, that's just power. Just <laughs> simple. It's just power. Let's watch the five steps A.J. Johnson's going to take to the line. That big, just past the shoulder backswing. And he kicks the 10 out. And don't count Team Johnson out of this one yet. As Moss now steps up fourth frame for his team, they're seeing their lead down to about 25 pins. Great toss there by Moss, wasting no time. Dig Titus. Titus gets 10 back. And that's with the Brace Irwin. Keep the string going for Team Moss. A 
That big exhale at the bottom. Left hand comes off the ball at release. Stared it all the way down. I don't think he felt 100% confident in that shot. Here's Devin Titus looking to get his team out to four in a row, and he does so successfully. Surprising it didn't make it all the way back to the pocket. That actually looked a little right of where the last one was. And this is being a house type pattern. Usually you get it right a little early, it manages to get its way back to the pocket. Not the case. For Williams, Johnson looks to get his team out to five bagger and right back in this match. Oh, beautifully done. Beautifully done by Johnson. And Aubin Williams, no problem on that spare. But right now, Dake Titus, biggest ball of his tournament to this point, eighth frame. Will we see six in a row? No, we won't. We're probably going to see an open frame. And he looks back on the lane going, how did that ball not hook? And time to do some addition. If you're the teammate, yeah, as this match get right down to the wire. My seventh frame, four goes, seven goes. Possible 248 yet for Team Moss. Titus, yeah, let's hope that count doesn't hurt him later. As yeah, now you're looking at maximum 244. For Team Johnson, biggest shot here for Orwin and his team. Stares it down, six kicks to ten. And ninth frame, Devin Titus. Must strike to keep pressure and have any chance. You see the fist pumps there. But Aubin Williams can make it a moot point. As Williams stepping up here in the foundation frame. A wall shot, and that's the problem sometimes with excessive ball speed. is that you have the head pin come back off the sideboard so quick it doesn't let the four, five, and two pins do any damage to the seven. So 244 the max, that would just mean 206 is all that's needed. By Team Moss to advance. First one of the 10th by Johnson. Oh my, and that gives Moss a little more work to do in the 10th. Moss is gonna need a mark if Johnson gets the last two. and making sure he gets in that setup. Staring it down, flush. Absolutely flush. Now it's up to this man right here, Chad Moss. Gonna need that mark. 
and his team in the next round. Comes out. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. What a change of events here. Instead of Belero Wawatosa. Count's got to be real good here still. Can't afford a five or six count. That's the best count you can get. There you see Johnson. And now it's going to take the miracle conversion from Moss. Not going to happen in the gutter. And we talked about it. Don't walk away. What a change. Four thirty five to four twenty nine. Your semi final match is complete. And some bowling balls getting away from some players here. So now team Jason Miller is gonna come on. They're gonna get some practice. Hi Trey. So Team Jason Miller with Trey Heinrichs Meyer. And Winston Petrie coming up next after practice is completed. Thanks to everybody who Bid on the auctions that were available through the 32 auctions website. Over $8,500 raised. Through the auctions, thanks to all the support of the bowling community. We're helping to make that happen. So it's going to be interesting. Heinrich Meyer tied for the PBA Junior High Qualifier Award earlier today. Averaged almost 245 to do that during the four regular team qualifying games. If there's a weak link on the team right now, it's going to be Winston Petrie. Uh, Petrie's bowling against his idol right now with A.J. Johnson on the other team. So Winston's going to have to get the nerves under control in a hurry. As he was the... Uh, Low man on the team, and he had some issues with lanes are transitioning earlier today. Jason Miller. Here you see 
taking a toss there. Bowling a long time, wants a credit. Gary Mage, PBA Hall of Famer, got Jason's first job in the bowling industry back in the day and taught him how to drill equipment and such. And uh, He's not missing anything right now. Football, he's a Seahawks fan, originally from out in the Seattle area. And you'd think out of the three players on this team with Jason Miller, he'd be the one with the TV experience. No, it's the man you just saw take the approach there. Trey Heinrichsmeyer. As we saw Trey back in October in the PBA LBC National Championships Clash from Bayside Bowl in Portland. He's out there to see that taping when it happened. And uh, Trey and his family had a great time out there in Portland. They got out there a couple days early just to enjoy the area. And uh, I don't know if my buddies uh, in Portland are watching right now. Frankie Ding Dong, you guys watching? Throw something in the comments. If not, we'll see Frankie and Ding Dong sometime soon. Of course, I know there's been some pretty big fundraisers going on out in Lewiston, Maine, about a half hour, 35 minutes north of Portland. That unthinkable mass shooting that happened there. Just in time recreation. Eight victims in that bowling center. And, you know, the bowling community has come together. I've seen a lot of support. Bayside Bowl even has their version of the bricks that they normally give the bowlers for the 300 games and each of the victims from that. Shooting in Lewiston has their own brick, memorializing them for eternity. Inside of Bayside Bowl, we are underway with match two. Once again, our adult players, our celebrities, bowling the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth frames of each game. And A.J. Johnson starts it off for his team with a strike. Jason Miller... Looking to convert that 2 4 10 gets none. That's a little unusual. And no lineup changes for Team Johnson as Dick Titus stepping up in the second frame. And a super washout is a big ouch. Winston Petrie. Stepping up for Team Miller. Picks him up nicely. Super washout. Has he got it? No, hooks past the head pin. And the open frame for Team Johnson leaves us basically even after two frames. Here comes the TV star. <laughs> Told me he's got his. Stick it to him once with that. Ouch. Speaking of getting stuck to you, nine pin sticks it to Heinrich Smyer right there. See what Devin Tice can do here, third frame. Hey! Anything you can do, I can do better. Anything I can do better than you. That song is older than me, I hope. But now you just got to make the spares and move on. Spare made, moving on. Fourth frame, we've got our... Adults bag up. Once again, two-game total pin match. 435 to 427. A.J. Johnson's team came out of the opening match of the step ladder. Team Glenn Deutschendorf waiting in the wings. Great toss there by Miller. Let's see what Johnson can do here. 
Look at that setup. Nice. Relaxed. Into the swing. Through the swing. Wow, right through the head pin. 3-6. 9-10. Petrie up, fifth frame, working on a strike for Team Miller. Ten back. He must have overheard me. He must be ticked off or something. As I said, he could be the chance to be the weak link for his team the way I saw him struggling late in the qualifying round and in the Bakers in the round of eight. And he's gotten right by that. As Heinrich Meyer comes high, he should be happy. That's just a 6-10. And Dick Titus wasting no time stepping up. And maybe another half second to focus could have been a little bit of a difference for him. Smart move, get to move on for Dick Titus. And Jason Miller gets in the mix. And a big advantage early. Oh, and another nine pin for Devin Titus. He's got to be thinking, what have I done to deserve back-to-back -back nines? Eighth frame, Winston Petrie stepping up. Looking to really put a world of hurt on Team Johnson. He likes it. He gets them all, and there you see on the way back the confidence. That Petrie is having right now during the step ladder final. Eric Smeyer, foundation frame. Oh, that time he gets the nine out. Head pin. Jamming into the nine pin. As it came off the sideboard. Maximum score, 235, Team Miller. Maximum score for Team Johnson, 226. That's the Team Johnson right now only in. Seventh frame. Oh, the week 10. And, well, we've seen them come back from this before. We saw this last game. They were on lane 22. And they made the big comeback against Team Moss. And Jason Miller doing the smart thing right now. No, need, no reason to rush through the 10th frame. As you're going to wait to switch lanes anyway. And that one, a little squeeze on the bottom. And he's lucky he took the nine out. And Dick Titus high again, almost. Was staring down to 6-7. Lucky to take the seven down. So 184 the maximum for Team Johnson. The spare here. Team Miller in the two O's. So Team Miller already looking at a minimum 20 plus pin advantage going into game two of this match.
see what Devin Tyus can do here. Is Jason Miller going to go back to the bag for the 10th frame? Phil ball. And hi, the old light 410. That was not a pretty looking shot. Miller Phil ball. 212 for Team Miller. And Team Johnson's going to be looking at pretty much the same deficit they were looking at. In their first match, if not more, the striking out here by A.J. Johnson. Johnson steps it out. Johnson takes all 10 down. Let's see what Johnson can do here to keep that 173 alive. No, Sean Johnson's probably watching back home in Illinois along with Judy Johnson, mom and dad. AJ wants to say hi. Heck, Carrie and I want to say hi. My lovely wife, Carrie. Production assistant extraordinaire of the day again. Helping take care of things here. And I'll tell you what, people have been extraordinary all day long. No doubt about it, it has been the volunteer staff here at the Junior Hall of Fame event. Over 30 strong for these volunteers. And Johnson with the conversion. And we're getting into our second game. This two-game total pin match. And once again, Team Johnson finds themselves down by a bunch. Last time it was 46, this time 49. But switching lanes is always a little tricky. And let's see what Johnson can do here. And that's an opening frame strike. Jason Miller wasting no time stepping up, looking to match, looking to keep advantage. Team Miller by 49. And he does so. Quality toss. As Dick Titus steps up. And he's been having some issues with high and light, this time light. Breaks up the 2 8 10. Winston Petrie. Looking to put a double on the board. Keep the lead with his team. Does so successfully. He is not the weakest link, no doubt. Quality cover there by Dake Titus. Now it's Heinrich Meyer. First to three for Team Miller, and they're looking to put any doubt in this match away pretty early. Yeah, it's... Uh, Yeah, 
Looking a little tough for Team Johnson right now. Team Miller looking pretty solid. As Miller steps up in front of the camera, just lucky enough to get the 2-8. And only the 2-8 to stand. Great cover there by Devin Titus. Now, Jason Miller, he'll be hooking at this 2-8, no doubt about it. Take the scenic route, get them both. Away we go. And now it's up to A.J. Johnson to try to get some Momentum going back for his team, Rap 10. Vicious Rap 10. And now Winston Petrie, fifth frame. That was a little quick off the thumb. Wow, and it still rolls up to the pocket. And the frames are running out for Team Johnson, no doubt about it. And if Heinrich Smyre can get this one in the fifth, it wouldn't say it's going to be near impossible for his team to come back. For Dake Titus. But it's not going to be easy. Oh, and there's a little bit of a lucky strike. Eric Meyer, though, shakes it off, just gets up there, does his thing. And 10 back for Team Miller again. And this one could be all but over. Devin Titus, there is a beautiful shot. Miller, seventh frame, working on a double, looking to get three in a row on the board again for his team. Yeah, this one, I hate to say it's all but over. But it's all but over. A.J. Johnson, though, no such thing as quitting this young man. Until it's mathematically impossible, he's going to throw every ball the best he can. Wow, look at that. Just Winston Petrie, he's, he's been the MVP of this game so far. No doubt about it. And this one's all but over. Now, Heinrich Meyer, foundation frame. Put the cherry on the Sunday with that one. And we have our championship match set. Team Miller, Team Deutschendorf. And a great run. This is the highest showing I can think of for the PBA or PWBA celebrity that's been here in the time that we've been part of the Junior Hall of Fame event. And after all that travel A.J. Johnson's had over the last week with coming back from Santiago, Chile after taking that gold medal in the Pan American Games, uh, quality showing by the Titus Twins and A.J. Johnson in this event today. No matter what I do, I'm going to get the shine off of Jason Miller's head. No matter what camera I switch to in the back here. 
So let's take the pretty one that packs 10 back. There we go. Team Deutschendorf is going to get some practice shots as they come on. Great third place finish. For Team Johnson. And I mean, you look at all the titles that A.J. Johnson won as a youth player back in the days with our Youth Challenge Series on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. He had several, including the Sean Yona Memorial back in 2012. Up at Sheboygan, it's just so nice to see these players that come back after their youth careers are done to be part of this Junior Hall of Fame event, give back to the young players up and coming and help them attain not just some scholarship money, but make new connections that well. I, I guarantee you every young bowler, male, female today, That got pictures taken, got a chance to talk with A.J. Johnson. It is a special day for them. Let's see if Team Miller can keep the momentum going as they're going to get a little bit of a break here. As our championship match coming up next in the 2023 Junior Hall of Fame Tournament. Once again, thanks to our big sponsors again this year with 900 Global, I Am Bowling, and the Milwaukee Bowling Association and Hall of Fame.
So we're getting ready to fire here in our championship match. First game of the two-game total pin match. Jason Miller getting ready to start things off here. And he comes high. Team Deutschendorf had lane choice. Surprisingly, they went with the right lane first. How about that? Single pin goes late for Deutschendorf. I wouldn't say it's a must make this early in the match for Miller, but we've seen momentum change so many times with a quality spare conversion just slides behind it. Now we have Gina Schakowsky stepping up in the two spot. Schakowsky, great toss there. We mentioned this is a PBA Junior event. She's taken out a PBA Junior title in the past. Yes, yeah, Winston Petrie up, second frame. Team Miller. And he has just been around that pocket. All step ladder long. One of my favorite names here, Shooter. Shooter, Gerlesh. Garlish comes light. Lucky to leave just the 2 8. Heinrichs Meyer looking to get the double on the board, does so. The quality toss. Let's see what Garlish can do here to take a little extra time. Get himself focused. And get 10 back in two balls. No problem on the cover. Best way to do it. Jason Miller stepping up fourth frame for his team. Working on a double. Make it a three-bagger. Great toss there by Miller. And now Deutschendorf on the port side. And his team's fourth frame. Oh, and the four just does not do the job on the seven. Winston Petrie. Stepping up. Fifth frame. Team Miller. He likes it, and you see why. Right there, you absolutely see why he likes it. Four in a row. Team Miller. And Deutschendorf, no problem on the cover. Trey Heinrichsmeyer. These players, it's been a long day for them. They're not waiting in line. They know what they want to do. They're set. They're firing. And they're throwing a ton of strikes. And Gina Schachowski is going to really have to light a fire under her team right now. As the headpin comes off the sideboard and runs interference, doesn't let the headpin get to the seven. And Jason Miller... Smells the chum. Ah, put a turkey on top of a turkey. It's that time of year. It's not quite a turducken. But it is a six-bagger, turkey on turkey. For Team Miller. And let's see what Winston Petrie can do here. Eighth frame. Jeez. I will never call anyone the weakest link again. <laughs> I don't know if he heard me. I don't know if somebody texted him. But here comes Shooter. Shooter Garlish. Sixth frame. 
makes it happen. Yeah, let's see what Heinrich Meyer can do here. Foundation frame. And yeah, we're looking at a possible 277 game. Out of Team Miller here in this opening game of this two game total pin match. And for the lane, that's been the tough lane for a couple of teams. They're uh, getting it figured out. But don't count Team Deutschendorf out of it yet as their maximum score is still 256. Oh, no scramble. And that could let Team Deutschendorf right back in to keep the pinfall close. Sachowski didn't like the footwork, you could tell. Fell off to the right on that shot. Lucky to leave just a 10. Usually you get a shot, you pull through and fall off like that. It's usually right through the face for a split. Scenic route for Miller. Spare first ball to 10th, 255. The maximum for Team Miller. Shachowski, eighth frame cover. 230s still possible for Team Deutschdorf. Yeah. Not great count there on the fill ball. 252 for Team Miller. Ninth frame for Garlish. Still possible 235. Deutschendorf, and Deutschendorf's going to have to punch all three in the 10th to get there, but what a great toss by Garlish in the foundation frame to help his team out a bit. First ball of the tenth for Deutschendorf. Oh, and he comes high, and that is painful for Team Deutschendorf, and that is just a momentum killer. You had your chance to get right back into this game, stay within 20 or so pins, and now you're going to find yourself down by 50. Well, one on the spares, 201. They're going to switch lanes, but now Team Miller, 51 pins the advantage over Team Deutschendorf. And I'm sure there's going to be a little talking things over. If you think you need to get a different ball in your hand, if you're Team Deutschendorf, you're going to do it. Team Miller not under that type of pressure. Team Miller can just kind of do their thing. And Deutschendorf bounces right back. Ten down, and it's it's going to take a ton. All Team Miller really has to worry about is they keep filling frames and get a double or two in there. They know they're going to be in the 220s, and it's not easy to shoot 260 in a championship match. That's what it take to get by him. Chachowski, that long trip on the 10 pin.
Petrie, second frame. Once again, look at that young man. He has just stepped up. He struggled during the late part of the qualifying round. He struggled a bit as well in the round of eight, but he's managed to keep his team in contention. Week 10 doesn't go. Let's go over to Heinrichsmeyer. Staring it down. Scrambles. Head pin doesn't do the job. But right now, that's okay. If you're Team Miller, you're just thinking fill frames. Get it near the pocket and fill frames. Because the pressure's on your opponents to make the comeback. That's all you need to do sometimes. Fill the frames. Let your opponents have to be the ones to string the strikes. Deutschdorf runs it high. Gets the break. But they know every frame they can't string. He's letting that championship slip farther and farther out of their grasp. Miller wrap 10. He really thought that shot was there. A little step out. He thought it was going to happen. Sometimes your teammates can be smart. Alex at the wrong situation. Trey Heinrichs may giving Miller a little grief on the temp in there with the hook. Chachowski, beautiful toss. Petri wasted no time. Fifth frame. Oh, the wrap 10. Well, Winston, come back. You, you need to shoot your spare. You just went out camera. Left there, but he made his way back. Now shoot a garlish. Sixth frame, working on a strike, looking for a double that his team desperately needs. How about that? Try to stand up against his might, you 4-7-10. You fool. You foolish 4-7-10. Dead on it. Petrie. Deutschendorf needs to keep this string going. Seventh frame, four just gets the 10 down. Sixth frame for Team Miller. They were leading by 51. After the first game of this match. And they've lost about half of that to this point here in game two. Chachowski a little light. And that 2-8 may be the end of the road. Seventh frame for Miller. Yeah. 
stares it down. Wow, that one was a little snappy. Get two, and she does. Schuchowski, nice cover. This is a momentum saver right now for Miller. That's all this is. Get the spare, save momentum for your team, and worry about your last three shots. Perfect cover. So Shooter Garlish stepping up. Ninth frame, maximum score. 245. They're not out of it yet, but Garlish has really got to set up Deutschendorf for the 10th here. And he does successfully. Big 10 back. And now Petrie. Two twenty eight the max. For Team Miller, that's more than enough. They just need to get in the high one nineties to lock it up with that fifty one pin lead. How about that for the eighth frame? For his team. And now it's it's nothing but strikes. It's mandatory strike mode for Deutschendorf in the tenth. Can't leave anything on the table. There's that first one. Beautifully done. I mean, right now, with 245 being in the max, they just need spares with good counts with Heinrich Meyer in the ninth and Miller in the tenth to take home the title. But a double here is huge, and that double there, absolutely huge. And that really makes things a little easier on Miller in the tenth frame. Must strike here for Deutschendorf, and he does. There here you go. This is what it's being all about here at the Junior Hall of Fame tournament. The kids now are just spectators. It's up to their celebrity partner. And right now it's up to Jason Miller. Great count here. And a spare, it's good. Oh my! Air mail. And now this just got real interesting for the fill ball. For Deutschendorf. 244. That's 445. 752. Yeah. Miller just needs this spare. He likes it, and you see why. And now it's just keeping on the lane. Yeah, that was enough right there, actually. That spare was necessary, because if we got nine, it would be a tie situation right now. Doesn't matter, down the middle it goes. And there are your champions of the 2023 Junior Hall of Fame. Trey Heinrichs Meyer, Winston Petrie, and Jason Miller, your 2023 champions. Hi, guys. Hey, I'm going to talk to you guys in a minute, okay? So we'll get our winners up near the booth here in a second.
guys come up here for a minute. All right. All right, where do you want us to go? Get yourself lined up so we can see all three of your heads in this camera. All right, here we go. This is the first time we've done this at Junior All Fame. We got the winners' interview. We've got Trey Heinrichsmeyer. We've got Winston Petrie. We've got Jason Miller. Uh, hold on a second. Is that microphone on? It's, it's not on. Hold on a second. Somebody flipped it down on me. It should be up. Try it now. It's on. Try it again. Can you hear sound? Not really. Let's try it again. Ah, uh, come on. Hi, Phil. Oh, I got to, hold on, I got to shorten my wire. I got to, I got to shorten my wire. Uh, let's try this again. Short wires are not good. Phil. Hey, hey, we hi, got Phil. it. Hi, Phil. Hi, Phil. Hey, everybody. Hey, congratulations, hi, champions. Uh, hey, so I was watching Winston during the, the later part of qualifying and during the Baker rounds and you, 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 you were the guy I was worried about coming into this, honestly. I wasn't worried about these two guys. And I actually made the mistake. I said you were the weakest link coming into this. And I don't know if you heard me or what, but what changed between the end of the round of eight and, and the step ladder for you, Winston, because you were on fire. I started kind of feeling it a little bit. Like, I could feel my hand getting through it really well. And I, uh, I also thought I was the weakest link, so I <laughs> figured I had to step it up a little bit. And then Trey, well, Trey's got too much TV time this year anyway. We'll get to him in a minute. But, Jason, first ball of the 10th of that championship match, uh, yikes. Yeah. Uh, what, what happened I, on that I one, had, man? I lost all look. I should have changed balls, got out of that thing. Um, yeah, that was just really bad, got really lucky. These guys carried me all day, so it was awesome. Good stuff. First time you've won this event? The first time I've won this event, uh, six-time bowling, so I'm glad to finally get one. And first time for both of you guys as well? Trey, I know you, Second for you, Trey. Okay, who'd well, you win with well, before? First title, though. Oh, first title, yeah. yeah first yeah. title here, yeah. So I've only bowled twice. You've only bowled it twice. So that's a pretty good record, 500. So why did you – because Winston's from Illinois. You're from near Eau Claire. Is it just other tournaments you guys met and decided to bowl this thing? Or? Uh, yeah. Uh, he just texted me and asked me to bowl, and I had nothing going on, so I'm here. You know? was, All right. It had to be probably one of the most last-minute entries. Okay. Like there were two spots left. Yeah, it's definitely possible. So what you're saying is that you, as soon as the entries open this next year for 2024, you get, are you going to be able to come back and defend? No, you're not. Out. You're going to age out. So age out. You're going to age out, so Winston's going to have to find himself a new partner. I am. I know. All right, well, he'll be taking resumes at uh, Winston's partner at gmail.com or yeah, whatever we go. need to do on that. So, <laughs> gentlemen, <laughs> congratulations. Appreciate everything you've done all day. And Thanks, uh, Phil. safe Thanks travels for, home. Uh, streaming all day. Hey, Bye. absolutely. Appreciate that. Thank all you, right. Phil. Thanks. Bye, Phil. Thank you, Phil. All right, and that's it for our coverage. Of this 2023 Junior All Fame Tournament. Once again, Shan Lubinsky's done this for 17 years. She's not the only one obviously doing it, but she's the point person on everything. She's done such a great job with it. The volunteers, again, over 30 volunteers to help out this year. Phenomenal work for everyone. And thanks to everybody that joined us online. So look again next year, 18th edition, 2024. Junior Hall of Fame will be back. Trey Heinrichsmeyer won't be back. Well, he might be back as an adult bowler. You never know. He's going to be old enough to do so. It'll be kind of fun to watch. It's always fun to watch the kids that used to bowl this as kids come back as adults and, and come back and win. So hopefully we'll get that done. Thanks, everybody. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Take your kids bowling, parents, because you know they're going to have fun for life, and we'll see you back here in 2025 for the Junior Hall of Fame.